Hey there, Hofstra fans, and welcome inside the W.B. Mason Coaches Report here on GoHofstra.com. I'm Julian Coultry, joined by the head coach of the Hofstra Pride Baseball team, John Russo. Coach, how's it going? Good, Julian. Thanks for having me. Well, this past week, you guys take on Delaware. We'll get a little bit more in-depth in a second, but first, you guys lose two or three. What were your thoughts on the weekend, other than, obviously, the record? Um, well, you know, you got to win series at home, so that's uh, super disappointing. Um, no, I don't know. You know, I thought we, you know, worked really hard to win a game, and, um, you know, we got beaten about every aspect you could possibly be beat this weekend. You know, out coached, out played, out pitched, out hit. You know, you pick something. Sometimes you just have to tip your cap to the opponent and, you know, say Delaware just played better this weekend. I'm gonna go with the rallying cry, I guess, a little bit was the fact that while the offense struggled, the pitching in the beginning games uh, was was pretty good. Start with Nick Kozlowski, seven hits spared across eight innings in that first game. You rallied to get a victory. What'd you like from Kaz? You know, uh, Kaz, you know, had a long week. You know, he had a real bad performance down at Wilmington on Friday, and you know, I don't think this Friday could have came soon enough for him. And you know, I was real proud of Kaz. Um, you know, he gave up two runs early, and we were down 2-0, and he got out of a bunch of jams. Uh, where Delaware could have probably extended the lead and probably made it too much for us to overcome, to be honest. And, uh, you know, he had a good breaking ball, which I, I would have to argue was the, the first time all year that he was able to, to have it in play. And, you know, really, really pitched more than just out gutted uh, them. And um, super happy. He really set us up on the weekend to give us a chance to win with uh, going eight innings. Uh, I thought he gained strength as the game went on. He had a, his eighth inning was probably his easiest inning of the weekend. And, um, you know, did a great job. And the games two and three, obviously, probably not the results that you would have wanted. We'll start with the pitching in terms of, do you think it was more inconsistent effort by the starting staff or more of a bullpen uh, deficiency? Whew, I mean, uh, David Dorico gave us six shutout and, um, you know, he gave up one run. It was unearned on an error. And, um, you know, I don't think David could throw any better than what he's done probably his last two outings. I thought, uh, you know, Jeff went four and a third or four and two thirds, uh, only gave up two runs. Um, 75 pitches, he had a little bit of tenderness in his elbow, but, you know, that, that kind of outing is good enough to win. And, um, you know, I thought both David and Josh and Kaz, you know, pitched as well to, to win a series as, as anybody could ask. Uh, you know, our bullpen was, was bad this weekend. I, I think it's something like 13 runs and, you know, six innings of pitched. And to be honest, it just can't be that. Um, you know, I, maybe I picked the wrong guys. It, it starts with me first and foremost. and. You know, I think this week, you know, I'm going to give a couple of guys, you know, opportunities that probably hadn't gotten opportunities in conference. To be honest, they just deserve it. Mm -hmm. Now, now, talking a little bit about the offense in the series this past week, especially in the third game where you guys only got a run in that bottom of, of the ninth inning on, uh, I believe, what was a wild pitch. So what kind of happened with the offense this weekend, especially since, you know, a week ago we saw the offense kind of flourishing and just kind of hit a roadblock? You know, um, to be honest, it started on Saturday and a little bit from, you know, uh, Friday. You know, I think at one point we were 18 innings scoreless until getting that run in the ninth inning yesterday. And, um, you know, as much as hitting is contagious, you know, not hitting is contagious, I think. And, you know, uh, I think uh, guys' confidence were down a lot. And, you know, there wasn't anything to pep them up or cheer them on more than I think the team could have done this weekend. And, you know, guys are just uh, battling... I don't think it's so much a mechanical issue as I do think it's a confidence issue. And, um, you know, with losing games this year, you know, with always facing everybody's best, with hitting in bad weather, with numbers being down across the board, you know, I, I think you would think, well, hey, their offense hasn't been anything, but what if I told you we were the fourth best batting average in the CAA? You know, people wouldn't assume that, but everything across the board in the NCAA is just down offensively. And hitters just got to be more mentally tough to deal with it. We you know, have this midweek on Wednesday. We need some guys to mentally break through to get some confidence going into Wayne Merrill. We could be in a lot of trouble. No, let me ask you about the midweek game. You know, you always tell me that you want to do certain things, explore different options. So what sort of tinkering are you going to be doing, both with the lineup and the pitching staff, for this midweek game? You know, I think uh, we're going to start Brian McDonald on Wednesday. And, um, you know, he hadn't pitched much, but I think he's one of our better arms. And, you know, I know he had a rough ninth inning, but it's probably been two weeks since he threw. And, you know, so I need to get him two or three innings to um, to see how he does. Yep. And, you know, I, I'd like to see, like, a Everett Keller, a Luke Noon again, you know, a Cody Norman. Um, I want to see them guys on Wednesday, you know, and get them ready one more shot and, then, and probably use them in situations on Friday, Saturday, Sunday that I hadn't used them before. Also going to, you know, play P. 
Peterson, Donovan, Denam, they, they sat out, um, you know, they sat out Sunday's game. And, you know, to be honest, when you go 18 innings scoreless or not getting hits, they, there's no reason for them not to get a start. And, um, you know, I'd like to see them going. They're offensive guys that I, I think could help the offense. You know, we need some type of spark right now. And, you know, I don't know what it is or when it's going to happen, but we need it to, to figure out soon because, man, William Mary's a, you know, leading the conference. They're, they're a really good opponent. Now let's talk about the tribe. Obviously, a couple weeks back, you had mentioned that they were not only the best hitting team in the conference, but the best hitting team in the NCAA. <laughs> so they definitely know how to launch the ball, but the pitching's not that bad either. So what are, things do you sort of expect? What's the scouting report thus far on the tribe? You know, um, to, to say they're just an offensive team, what I think would be such a, you know, uh, not looking at the whole picture. I mean, William Mary went up this weekend to Northeastern, who had the best pitching staff in and the CAA, one of the best pitching staffs in the country, and then they beat them in close games, 4-3, you know, 6-2. You know, they held them down. They didn't get theirs offensively, but they did enough to win. And when you're an opponent like that and go to somebody's place to beat them, you're really tough. And, you know, William Mary not only did on the road, but they're a, they're a different monster at home. I mean, they get offensively going. They got Ingram on the mound on Friday night, who, you know, was one of the top pitchers in the CAA last year, beats Old Miss in a regional last year. A lefty that's as good a pitcher as there is in the league. They got, you know, two more guys Saturday, Sunday. They're as good as anybody in the league. You know, so not only do you have to fight the burden of them being one of the best offensive teams in the country at home, you also got to face three good pitchers that are as tough as anybody. So, you know, what a what a tough, tall task we've got coming this weekend. And, you know, hopefully we can play a little bit better against LIU and, and get something going to get ready for them. Finally, Coach, how do you not only prepare your squad for taking on a William & Mary team, but let them know that maybe there, obviously there's pressure, but you, you want to know that all we have to do there is take it one game at a time and win these contests? You know, uh, the one thing we've been surprisingly good at right now is we've been um, we've been good on the road. I think mm -hmm. we're over 500 baseball on the road right now, and we've been a really re resilient club. And, you know, uh, before we went down to Wilmington, one of the things I said is maybe going on the road was what we needed. and. You know, I think we were a lot different club at Wilmington. We were last weekend than we were this weekend. But, you know, to be honest, I thought we gave really good effort on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this weekend. I really do just have to tip my cap to Delaware. Um, but, you know, I think probably playing William and Mary right now there instead of here is probably a little advantage for us. I, I, if we have any advantage, but right now on the road, we've been pretty tough and resilient and, and a better club on the road right now than we've been at home. So. Um, you know, if there's any advantage at all we have this weekend, maybe that's it a little bit. Coach, best of luck this week. Thanks, man. Remember, Hofstra fans, you can tune into the WB Mason Coaches Report each and every week right here on GoHofstra.com.